Greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the Art of Integration. In this video, we're going to take a look at a method called Weierstrass substitution, which, as it turns out, is regarded as the world's sneakiest substitution. Now, this method is for integrals of the following form, combinations of sine and cosine, just to first powers, and we have some examples over to the right there. Now, these are going to be the simple ones that we'll apply Weierstrass substitution to. We're going to evaluate the first one in this video. The others we'll get to later. But let's take a look at some other ones that are a little bit more complicated that we can also solve with this method called Weierstrass substitution. Here's some of the more challenging integrals that we can apply Weierstrass substitution to. We'll get to these in future videos in the Art of Integration. But let's go ahead and take a look at some problems that we already solved using similar substitutions. Earlier in the art of integration, we went through some problems with what we called trigonometric tricks. We had an example there, the integral of one divided by one plus cosine squared of x. And for that, we used the substitution t equals tangent of x. I'll have that link down below in the description in case you haven't seen that recently. And we're gonna use this as motivation. Now, the examples that we're gonna apply Weierstrass substitution to only involve sine and cosine, typically not sine and cosine raised to powers. Now using that last example as guidance for the integrals here where we'll apply Weierstrass substitution, we're gonna make a substitution of the following form, t equals tangent, but not of x. The substitution will be t equals tangent of x over two. And as it turns out, that's gonna take these integrals here and convert them into basically an integral, typically where we can apply partial fraction decomposition. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the basics, some review topics that we're gonna to need to go through this. Just some simple trigonometric identities that you're already familiar with. At this point, you're probably already familiar with these basic identities, the Pythagorean identities and the double angle identities. Now, how we're going to use these is we're gonna take our Weierstrass substitution. The substitution that we'll be making is t equals tangent of x over two. And we're gonna use these two identities to convert sine of x and cosine of x to t. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and how we use that Weierstrass substitution and do the conversions of sine of x and cosine of x to t. Now our true first step really should be calculating dt. We're making a substitution, t equals tangent of x over two. And anytime you make a substitution, you have to calculate the corresponding differential. Now for us, that'll be pretty simple. We know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And we have to combine that with the chain rule. So differentiating the outer function, we get secant squared of x over two. And then from the chain rule, the derivative of the inside should give you a factor of one half. All right, so that's just calculating the differential, but we're going to continue and rewrite this. Now, the first step is we're gonna use our identity the Pythagorean identity to rewrite secant squared of an angle. That's gonna come out to be one plus tangent squared of that angle. And that angle is X over two. So let's go ahead and use that. We're gonna rewrite DT first as one plus tangent squared of x over two, don't forget that factor of a half. And now we can use our Weierstrass substitution to replace tangent squared of x over two. We can replace tangent of x over two with t. So we can replace that tangent squared term with one plus t squared. All right, now this looks a little bit better. We're rewriting everything from uh, basically uh, X's to T's, but notice on this differential side, the DX side, 
we have a mixing of variables. We have quantities in terms of t, multiplying differentials in terms of x, dx. Now, generally, I find that to be a bad idea. So what we want to do is convert this to basically get all the t terms on the appropriate differential dt side. Now, that's just going to be really simple. All we need to really do is just divide the part in the brackets and then multiply by 2. So if we move the t terms over, it looks like we should get 2 and then divide it by 1 plus t squared dt. Now we have the t terms on the dt side, and that equals dx. And that is how we're going to convert the differential dx in terms of t. We make our Weierstrass substitution, t equals tangent of x over 2, and we can go ahead and replace here dx with 2 divided by 1 plus t squared dt. Now, with the Weierstrass substitution, our next step is there's going to be some simple identities for taking sine of x and cosine of x and rewriting them in terms of our substitution variable t. Let's go ahead and get to that. One of the simplest ways to do this conversion of sine of x and cosine of x to t is to first recognize from our Weierstrass substitution, inside of tangent, we have the angle x over 2. And we're going to end up using a very basic conversion triangle, a simple right triangle, to first convert sine and cosine of the angle x over 2 to t. So let's go ahead and get to that. To create the conversion triangle, let's recognize that we can rewrite our substitution, the one side with involving t. We're going to rewrite that as t over 1. And that's going to allow us to easily identify tangent as the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So with our angle x over 2, we get the opposite side to that angle as t and the adjacent side to that angle as 1. And if you just work out with the Pythagorean theorem, you can get that the hypotenuse comes out to the square root of 1 plus t squared. And from there, it'll be very easy to first convert sine and cosine of x over 2 to t. So if we first do cosine of x over 2, we know cosine is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we'll get cosine of x over 2 converting to 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared. And similarly, we can go ahead and convert sine of x over 2. We're just going to think of sine as opposite over the hypotenuse. And this will come out to be t divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared. Now, this is not what we want. Remember, we're trying to convert sine of x and cosine of x to t. But right now, we have cosine and sine of x over 2. Well, we'll finish this conversion by making use of double angle identities. To continue with our conversion, we're going to recognize that we can think of the angle x as being double or twice the angle x over 2. And that's going to be the key the converting sine of x in terms of what we have already, cosine of x over 2 and sine of x over 2. So the next step really is just first applying that idea. We're going to think of sine of x as sine of 2 times x over 2. And now we just really apply the double angle identity. We're going to use sine of 2 theta. That equals 2 sine of theta times cosine of theta. And we're thinking of the angle there, the basic angle as x over 2, and we apply the double angle identity now. So we get 2 times sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. And we just need to go ahead and replace now the sine and cosine of x over 2 terms with what we found already. So this comes out to 2. We have our sine term as t divided by the square root 
of 1 plus t squared and the cosine term, that converts to 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus t squared. And that is it. Notice in the denominators, you have the same square roots, so you can go ahead and multiply them. They're going to cancel out, and what we get for sine of x, this comes out to be 2t divided by 1 plus t squared. The conversion for cosine of x works the same way. We'll first rewrite cosine of x as cosine of 2 times x over 2. And now we'll use the double angle identity for cosine in the following form, cosine of 2 theta. This equals 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. So let's go ahead and apply that. We'll get 2 cosine squared of our angle. The basic angle is x over 2. And we get minus 1. And now we just go ahead and convert cosine of x over 2 from what we found earlier. And since it's cosine squared, that's going to get rid of the square root there. And to finish, you can just go ahead and apply some basics with common denominators. We're going to go ahead and replace 1 with the common denominator, 1 plus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. And if you go ahead and simplify those numerators, we'll get this comes out in the numerator to be 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. And that is our conversion for cosine of x in terms of t. Now let's go ahead and summarize the conversions for cosine of x and sine of x, and then we'll put this all to use with our first example. At this point, we now have everything that we need to go through Weierstrass substitution. Now, don't go through all the work that we just went through of converting sine of x over 2 and cosine of x over 2, applying double angle identities. The only things you really need here are your conversion for dx in terms of t and your conversions for sine and cosine of x to t. So you might want to write these down before we go ahead and get to our first problem. When you're ready, let's go ahead and get to that. Our first problem here is really simple if we use Weierstrass substitution. The work's actually going to be pretty minimal, and we're going to start by replacing dx in terms of t and cosine of x in terms of t. So let's go ahead and write that out. No need to go through all that work already that we already did. You can just make use of those at this point. All right, we're going to replace cosine of x in the denominator in terms of t, which is 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. And we replace dx with 2 divided by 1 plus t squared. All right, now that actually looks kind of messy in that denominator. You have a fraction within a fraction. But what we can do is go ahead and take the 1 plus t squared and multiply it into that denominator, and that's going to cancel out the 1 plus t squared in that smaller denominator. So let's go ahead and write that. We'll move that 2 into the numerator. We'll get 2 times 1 plus t squared, but now plus plus 1 minus t squared. All right, and the rest of the work should be obvious. We're just going to go ahead and distribute and simplify in that denominator. And if you go ahead and do that, you're going to have a 2t squared minus t squared. I'll just simplify to just t squared. And the rest of the terms combine to 3. And from there, we can recognize that as our basic integral formula. And we'll be using a as the value square root of 3. So it looks like our antiderivative here should come out to be 2 
divided by square root of 3 times inverse tangent of t divided by square root of 3. And the rest of it is just converting back t in terms of x. That was with our Weierstrass substitution, where t was tangent of x over 2. So we get kind of a messy answer here. You have inverse tangent with tangent of x over 2 inside and a factor of square root of 3 in the denominator. But that is it. That is one of the probably the simplest examples that you can go through using Weierstrass substitution. And it illustrates all the basics, converting dx, converting cosine of x, and in other problems, you might have to convert sine of x all in terms of t. We're going to see, again, some more complicated problems in the Artem integration coming up. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, let me know how you like the new format in the comments down below. And as always, like and subscribe.